This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2134, Five Simple Steps to Help You Change a Lifestyle Habit by Krista O'Reilly Davy DeGee of lifeinprogress.ca. And I'm Justin Mollick, reading articles to you every day to help you live a more meaningful and positive life. Now, today's post will be all about how to change a lifestyle habit that isn't serving you. I know we've all got some of those, so let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Five Simple Steps to Help You Change a Lifestyle Habit by Krista O'Reilly Davy DeGee of alifeinprogress.ca. This post is not intended to boss you around, as in insist you should quit sugar, or wine, or anything else you enjoy. If you are healthy and happy, then I am delighted for you. However, if you are at a place in your life where a sugar, refined carb, wine, nicotine, caffeine, drug, or junk food habit is no longer serving you, then this post of five ways to support yourself when you're doing the hard work to quit that habit may very well be of use. It's not a comprehensive list of everything that could possibly support you, of course, but a quick and basic rundown of strategies I use to let go and walk in greater freedom. Five simple tips to help you quit an ingrained lifestyle habit. Number one, get clear on your why and how. Write down your clear and compelling why. I suggest that if you are quitting to make someone else love you more or think you're prettier or whatever, that you will rebound. Your why should stem from a place of love and compassion for yourself and an understanding of your great worth. This is about you. Who and how do you want to be in the world? Spend the time to create a vivid mental picture of this, your health, habits, lifestyle, relationships, how you want to bring your gifts to the world, and so on. Don't try to quit everything at once. As a young adult, I quit drugs and alcohol at once. I went off refined sugar and a couple of years ago quit gluten, corn, dairy, and soy for a year and a half. I've gone extended periods without coffee in the past and recently quit wine. All of these instances were sustainable. When I recently tried an elimination diet that removed all the strong, bitter flavors I mostly love, I was miserable and gave up quickly. Will you go cold turkey or take a slow and simple approach? Number two, break routine. Your daily and weekly routine should be changed up in order to avoid common triggers. That girl's night where wine is the focus, the path you drive to work every single day that conveniently passes three Starbucks, the evening snuggle with Netflix that inevitably leads to unhealthy nighttime snacking, you get the idea. Build a healthy support network. You become like the people you hang out with, so choose wisely. Will your friends support or sabotage you? Sometimes the people you love simply don't understand that no, you cannot just enjoy a glass of wine at a wedding and then return to normal wine-free life. Moderation doesn't tend to work while you're in the throes of deeper addiction. Number three, practice purposeful self-care. Fill out a happy stress worksheet to identify what stresses you out, stress is a huge trigger, and the small and big things that bring you happiness. Then pencil some happy things into your weekly calendar. Go to bed for goodness sakes. Lack of sleep messes with your decision-making and appetite regulation, alters brain activity, induces cravings for fat, sugar, and salt, increases risk of obesity and diabetes, impairs glucose metabolism, and more. Go to bed. Stop running and numbing. For true freedom from cravings and addiction, you must get comfy with some ugly, dark feelings. You need to give yourself permission to feel what is simmering below the surface, anger, shame, fear, pure delight, to cry, and eventually to use your voice and speak up for what you need. Number four, eat a gut and brain calming diet. You have a fatty brain and it needs to be fed for optimal health. I'm talking good quality fats like wild fish or fish oils, hemp, flax, walnuts, olive oil, avocado, coconut, and eggs. These will help with mood, focus, concentration, energy, vision, synthesis, and function of neurotransmitters and molecules of the immune system. And please feed your little people plenty of good fat as it supports their brain development. Eat ferments to add in healthy bacteria. An imbalance of gut bacteria can cause intense cravings. It can lead to allergies 
and autoimmune dysfunction. Sugar, stress, caffeine, medications, fluoride, chlorine, and alcohol can all contribute to an unhealthy gut and exacerbate the cycle of cravings for more of the same. Kimchi, sauerkraut, even just a juice, kefir, yogurt, and cultured veggies are easy enough to add into your diet. I do not recommend kombucha if you struggle with sugar, alcohol, or carb cravings, or yeast allergies. Not everyone would agree. Plan for prebiotics to feed the good gut bacteria. Yep, back to the gut, and let me tell you why. Gut microbial fermentation of prebiotics promotes satiety, lowers hunger and energy intake in humans, and in rodents, is associated with appetite regulation and blood sugar balance. They boost immune function, lower stress response, inflammation, and autoimmune reactions, lead to better hormonal balance, and decrease risk of obesity and weight gain. But even just the fact that a healthy gut is essential for mood balance is reason enough, so if you wanna quit that habit, things will go a lot easier if you build a healthy gut. Some great prebiotic foods to consider include greenish bananas or plantains, dandelion greens, onions, leeks and garlic, artichoke, jicama, asparagus, and chicory root. Eat some of these raw if possible. And number five, supplement strategically. Add in adaptogens to calm and nourish your adrenal glands. Adrenal imbalance leads to blood sugar issues, brain fog, digestive problems, fatigue, food cravings, frequent illness, hormonal imbalance, inflammation and joint pain, anxiety and depression, and weight gain, especially around your middle. L-glutamine is an amino acid that may help with sugar and alcohol cravings, digestive health, including restoring a leaky gut, back to gut again, muscle strength and recovery, improved memory, focus, and concentration, multi-purpose. Now, higher intake of sugar, caffeine, alcohol, and chronic stress can cause mineral deficiencies, which in turn can lead to cravings and fatigue. Consider getting your iron and ferritin tested if you have weird or intense cravings or unexplained fatigue and supplement minerals like zinc, magnesium, selenium, and chromium. I know this is a quick rundown of ideas, but I hope that these five steps to support yourself as you quit that habit will prove useful in your life. You just listened to the post titled Five Simple Steps to Help You Change a Lifestyle Habit by Krista O'Reilly Davy DeGee of a life in progress.ca. Now, 2020, the year of many things, and we are in a new year now. If you own a small business, this could be the year where you switch to better payroll. Gusto wasn't just built for small businesses, it was built for the people behind them. Their online payroll is super easy to use. Gusto can automatically calculate paychecks and file all your payroll taxes, which means you have more time to run your business. Plus, Gusto does way more than payroll. Gusto helps with time tracking, health insurance, 401ks, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts, you get the idea. It's super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, they can transfer all your data for you. It's no surprise 94% of customers are likely to recommend Gusto. The Optimal Living Daily team has been using Gusto for years. We have no plans to change. It's really made our lives way easier. Here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. All you have to do is go to gusto.com slash old. Again, that's gusto.com slash OLD. I'm telling you, you're gonna love Gusto. Get started today. Thank you to Krista. Yesterday, we heard a post about building a routine, then today about changing a lifestyle habit. These both go hand in hand. As I always say, what works for one might not work for another, so that's why we hear so many different ideas and sides to a topic like habit building, productivity, happiness, even minimalism. You'll hear one person who can fit everything they own into a backpack and others who call themselves minimalists and have possibly more stuff than you. All different lifestyles and all something I think we can learn from. For me, the first tip really is important, even if it seems obvious your why and how. If I don't have a really strong why, it just won't happen. So this podcast has become my livelihood along with others who are part of this team. I feel like they're relying on me to keep going and learn more about podcasting and marketing or figuring out new ways to get the shows out there, other ideas for episodes, all that stuff. So my why has a lot to do with our team, but also you listening because I get those emails from time to time telling me how it's changed your life 
and telling me to keep going. So those emails really do affect me. But then a different habit that I might be working on, well, it'll tend to go in waves because it doesn't have as strong of a why. So really considering that, making sure there is a strong why can make the difference between a habit and a short-term activity or hobby. So find that why or whatever resonated with you in this post. Hope you're having a great week and I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday show where your optimal life awaits.